Hi, I'm Zor. Welcome to Unizor Education. Um, I would like to talk today about basic properties of partial derivatives. Um, this lecture is part of the course of advanced mathematics for uh, high school students and teenagers in general. It's offered on unizor.com website. I do suggest you to watch the lecture from there. You have to just go through the bunch of menus like calculus, partial derivative, basic properties. Um, because every lecture on uh, this website uh, has notes, uh, very detailed notes, and uh, for students who want to challenge the themselves, there are exams which you can take, not for every topic, but for many of them, and, uh, and it's absolutely free, so no advertisement even. So basically, go to this unizor.com to watch this lecture, that's my kind of better recommendation. All right, so, uh, properties of uh, partial derivatives. Well, first of all, let me start from a trivial fact. Partial derivative is a derivative by one particular variable of multivariable function, which means other variables are fixed, which means that the properties which we have learned about, um, about regular derivatives should all be uh, transferred without any modifications to uh, the partial derivatives because we are actually um, taking a derivative by one particular um, variable at a time so in particular let me just go one by one um, uh, for instance we have two functions of two variables and we are talking about their sum now partial derivative of this by one particular variable since y is basically a constant and x is the only variable we are basically differentiating by it should be equal to the sum of derivatives it's kind of obvious it follows immediately from the par car corresponding property of the regular derivatives. Now, as an example, for instance, you have function logarithm of x squared plus y squared plus xy, and you would like to differentiate it by x. Well, that's basically sum of two functions, and it's equal to uh, this plus this now here we are differentiating by x well this is actually a composition function uh, I do have a, a separate uh, um, property for the composition but I will just look ahead basically it's logarithm of something which means the derivative would be equal to 1 over that something times derivative of the inner function which is 2x so it's 2x here plus derivative of xy by x y is a constant so it's just a multiplication so its derivative is equal to y next property so I will do very fast these trivial properties because we have to spend some time on more specific for multivariable functions okay next one is multiplication by constant so if you have multiplication by constant obviously it's constant multiplied by and example for instance you have function uh, 2 logarithm of x square plus y square by dx it's 2 times a partial derivative of this which we have already obtained in the previous example which is this that's from logarithm and in inner function is 2x 
so 2x. So basically it's 4x. That's the answer. Next is product. Again, the same thing. Remember the property for the product? First time derivative of the second or second times derivative of the first. It's exactly the same thing with partial derivative because we are differentiating by one particular variable. So this would look like this. So it's the first one times the second derivative plus the second one times derivative of the first. You want an example? Here is an example. x minus y times x squared plus xy plus y squared. I specifically chosen this one because we can actually multiply and simplify it and get the derivative differently, then we can compare the results, right? So if I will do d of this by dx it's equal to the first one which is x minus 1 times the derivative of this one by x partial derivative which is what 2x plus y right plus the second one which is x squared plus xy plus y squared times the derivative of the first one well x minus y derivative by x is 1 so it just remains. And what's this equal to? Minus 2x squared plus x squared. So it's minus uh, no, no. Plus 2x squared plus x squared. So it's 3x squared. Okay, so I have 3x squared. Now uh, xy, I have minus 2xy and plus xy, right? So this is minus 2xy and this and this is plus xy and another plus xy. So there is no xy plus 2xy and minus and minus 2xy. Minus 2xy and plus xy, right? Okay, now y square. This is minus y square, and this is plus y square. So there is no y square. So this is the only answer. Now, on the other hand, we can multiply x minus y times x square plus xy plus y square. And what we would have? We have x cube minus y cube. x cube minus y cube. Now, x square y with a minus, x square y with a plus. x y square, this and this is a plus, and this and this with a minus. So everything uh, cancels except these two. And derivative of this by x, well, y is a constant, right? So it's 3x squared, which is exactly what we have. Nice checking. Now the last one is a chain rule. Again, completely equivalent to what we have with functions of one argument. So what if x is a function of t, y? And we want to differentiate by t. Y is a constant. Y doesn't really depend on anything. We are basically having a function of 
two arguments t and y, right? And x is just another function. So again, y is a constant, so we can completely disregard it. So it's differentiate di uh, uh, derivative of f of x of t by dx times dx of t by dt. This is again completely in accordance with the chain rule for regular functions of one argument. Uh, f of x of t and we would like to have the derivative of this. It's a derivative of f for x of x of t times derivative of x of t. Exactly the same thing. So that's the chain rule. Now this is the chain rule for one argument, but we will make it a little bit more complex when we want to differentiate in case both arguments x and y depend on t. But that's in the future. Well, future in this lecture. All right, so these are elementary um, properties of partial derivatives which are completely following, 100% following from the corresponding properties of the, of the regular derivatives. Now let's talk about something which is more specific to a um, uh, function of two arguments. Now, specificity starts when we have both arguments changing, right? Let me just recall um, the definition of the uh, regular derivative. So if you have regular function, to its derivative is equal to increment of the function divided by increment of the argument when argument increment of the argument goes to zero, right? Now, from this we actually derived something similar this type of symbolics which this means basically one infinitesimal variable and this is another infinitesimal variable and their um, ratio we understand in a sense that this ratio is actually uh, converges to this number um, and the difference between this and this uh, is some kind of an infinitesimal variable of a higher order, right? So, um, now, what if we have a function of two arguments? Now, both arguments can actually be incremented. So, let me just try to play exactly the same game with two variables. Let me start with this. Which is immediately following from this, right? So if this limit is this, then this thing is approximately equal to derivative um, increment of the function approximately equals to um, derivative at the point times increment of the argument. And this precision is greater whenever delta x is smaller. And whenever delta x goes to zero, this actually goes to equality, right? Okay, now, now let's consider we have a function of two arguments. And we do something like this. We, do, we increment both of them and see how it changes the increment of the function. I would like the same uh, kind of a approach. How increment of the function can be expressed in terms of increment of the arguments. So this is how it is uh, implemented in the function of one argument and now I'm trying to do something similarly. Again, increment of the function in terms of increment of the argument. Again, as an approximation, which is as um, which goes 
more and more uh, precise as increments of the arguments um, go to zero. All right, so let me just transform it slightly. I will do it this way. I will subtract this and add this. I didn't really change anything, just subtract it and add exactly the same expression. Now, in this particular case, what happens? I have only one argument changing, only x, while this one, y plus delta y, remains the same. So I can use actually this formula because now I have basically a function of one argument, x. y is fixed, so y is not incremented, only x is incremented. So I can say that this is equal to deri derivative by this argument. Well, in, in case, since I'm dealing with a function of two arguments, I have to use uh, the partial derivative of the function f of x, y plus delta y by dx times delta x. But now this is approximation, because I'm approximating this with this. So I'm taking derivative by x and multiplying it by increment of the argument. For a smooth function, we're obviously assuming that functions are differentiable, etc. That's true. Now, how about this thing? Uh, sorry, the second one, this thing. Here, I have exactly the same situation. My x remains the same. And function is incremented only because y argument is incremented. So I can also approximate it with a derivative by y in this particular case, right? This is a derivative by y times delta y. So this is an approximation and this is approximation for this and this is approximation for this using this property which is true for, uh, for functions of one variable, okay? So, if my delta x and my delta y are infinitesimals and are basically going to zero, then this becomes more and more precise um, equality. Now, here I'm talking about two infinitesimals, right? This is infinitesimal and this is infinitesimal. So what does it mean that they're getting closer and closer? Well, let me just repeat this for regular infinitesimal variables. So let's assume you have two infinitesimal variables, a n and b n. What does it mean that they're getting almost the same and they are more and more the same as n goes to infinity considering both of them are infinitesimal. It means the following. Their ratio is approaching 1. So the ratio between them, if it's approaching to 1, it means that they are of the same degree of infinitesimalness. So that's what basically this means. The ratio between this and this is going to 1. That's what we are actually saying when we are using the following. Instead of this, I will write differential because this is a differential, actually, right? It's increment, but uh, whenever we are um, um, sending zero to, uh, delta x and delta y to zero, we are talking about differential. So this differential is equal to this. So 
So I'm replacing delta with d, assuming that d is now an infinitesimal variable. And now I have an equality here in this sense, because this is infinitesimal and this is infinitesimal. Now, um, uh, and, and ratio between them is actually uh, converges to one. And that's, and that's what we are actually having. And this is called a total differential of the function of two arguments. So you are uh, partially deriving by x times dx, the partial derivative by y and dy. That's what a total differential means. Now, you can actually say that this is a definition of total differen differential. I did not really like derive. I basically defined this total differential, but I was trying to, um, to to explain that it does make sense. It makes sense in terms of this is infinitesimal. This is infinitesimal increment of the function uh, of two arguments expressed in terms of infinitesimal increments of the argument and partial derivatives. By the way, I forgot to tell. I had this f of x comma y plus um, f of x comma y plus delta y, right? In this particular case. And I changed it to y because when, del when delta y goes to zero, this goes to this. We are considering that the function is smooth enough. Um, now, what, what I need in this particular case, in terms of smoothness, is um, continuity of the partial derivative. If it's continuous, then this thing, as delta y goes to zero, you can replace it with this. So that's why I, I forgot to explain it, but it's kind of obvious thing. So this is the definition of the total differential of the function of two arguments. Now, let me uh, switch to a particular case, which I did kind of hinted before. What if you have this? So you have a function of two arguments, but each one of them is, in turn, uh, depends on uh, some parameter t. Well, I can actually say exactly the same thing as here. I can put this formula. This is a total differential. But now, what are the dx and dy? Total increment of the function of two arguments is equal to df of xy by dx now, what is dx? Now, dx is an increment, now, not just an argument. It now, now, it's a function of the argument. And, again, using the properties of the function of one argument, if you have, let's say, y is equal to y of x, dy is equal to y times uh, dx, right? Increment of the function is equal to um, its uh, derivative times increment of the argument. And in our case, function is x and argument is t. So we will do exactly the same thing here. Instead of dx, I will have um, x by t times dt. Plus, similarly, d uh, of f of x y by d y times y derivative by t at t times d t. So this is the total differential, and in this particular case, I can have a total derivative um, if I will do instead of this, I will do this, d f of x of t y of t by dt. Since it's a function of one argument, right, I can have derivative by this particular argument, which is equal to, in this case, 
dt goes to the left, so we will have a partial derivative of this function by its first argument and derivative. I can use this one. Doesn't matter what kind of symbolics I'm using, this one or this one. It's all the same, right? Plus, similarly, df of x, y by dy times dy by dt. And this is called a total derivative. So we had total differential and total derivative of function of two arguments when both arguments depend on the same parameter. Okay, now, now let me just give you one simple example um, how it can be used. It's actually a, an example from the physics. Um, it, there is a, a formula, I think it was Clyperon, Clyperon's formula, for ideal gas. So if you have some kind of a reservoir with some kind of a piston, so you can, and here is your gas here, so you can use this piston to squeeze it. Now, the gas has uh, the following characteristics volume temperature and pressure and uh, uh, the Clyperon's formula is uh, that's the formula if you increase only the volume with constant temperature, the pressure should decrease, right? If you increase the volume, pressure should be decreased. If you increase the volume with the same temperature, pressure should increase. So decrease volume, increase pressure. So that's the relationship between P and V, between pressure and the volume. Now, if volume is the same and you start heating the gas, then the pressure is again increasing, right? Uh, because the molecules are moving faster. So that's why with T increase, P should increase to make this constant. So, basically, um, I will use this to find out the dependency of the, uh, of the pressure on volume and temperature. So, let's say this constant is equal to C whatever that C is, it's uh, basically a amount of gas uh, here and whatever other. It's a constant. Now, so P in this case is equal to C T divided by V. Now, let's assume that number one, this piston is under our command and also we can have some kind of a temperature here to heat it up and it's all under our control. So volume is under our control and it's some kind of a function of time. Let's say we are gradually squeezing it and the temperature is under our control. So we know these two functions. Now the question is how fast the pressure would change if I would start changing my volume and temperature according to this to these formulas, to these expressions, whatever that is. It, maybe it's t times constant, maybe it's a t square, maybe it's some e to the power of t, whatever the formula for this function is, doesn't matter. We, we know this, okay? This is the law by which we are conducting this experiment. Well, not I shouldn't say law, it's not the law. It's rules according to which we conduct our experiment, okay? So, what is our function of two arguments? Well, that's P. And two arguments are T and V, both depending on time T. So X is basically T, Y is V, and F function is P. And we are interested in how the pressure would change with the time. So we are interested in this particular expression, derivative of pressure by time. Well, let's just apply this formula. So what do we have? We have 
partial derivative by first argument. First is, let's say, t. And the partial derivative by t would be what? C v, right? Times derivative of t. plus partial derivative by v well that's actually minus minus uh, c over v square right times t so c and t are constant and the derivative of 1 over v is minus 1 over v square times v. So this is basically the formula if we know the rules by which we are changing uh, volume and the rules by which we are changing the um, temperature then this is the formula by which we can come up with the, the uh, changing of the uh, pressure at any given time well obviously v is v of t this is function of t this is function of t etc right so this is how we are using this uh, formula of total derivative to find out in this particular case how our pressure is changing with the time well that's it um, I do recommend you to read the notes for this lecture on unizor.com. Um, well, other than that, basically, well, these, I would say, basic properties we have covered. So, thanks very much and good luck. <laughs>